All right, hello and welcome. This is gonna be a. I'm gonna try and keep it short and succinct, but never works out that way with tutorials. I feel, but it's gonna be a short tutorial that covers most of the skips in this game that are relatively easy to learn and perform. And this is gonna be aimed for the people who want to do the SNES Sprint Race on October 24th, 2020. Turns out that. DKC1 is the main game of this race, sort of, it's the longest one. And since I've used so many tutorials in Big 20, I figured I'd give back and make one myself, even though there's already plenty of tutorials for this game on DKCSpeedruns.com. But I figured I'd made one that's a little bit more tailored specifically for racers. So first things first with this game, if you're using Game Saver, I know Almost no one is anymore, but input revival code 20,000. Otherwise, save states won't work. Like I said, I'm not gonna go too in depth on the movement or specific stages. I'm just gonna go through the game in the stages that have big skips and try to teach how to do them. So real fast before I get started with this, it's important to know that you want to play this game on the version US 1.0 or US 1.1. You want to avoid Japanese because there's a lot of random barrels everywhere, which slows you down. And you want to avoid 1.2 because you can't do fanfare skip on it. Fanfare skip, if you notice when you beat a stage, the cones are dancing, they're happy, but it loses a lot of time. So on 1.1 and 1.0, if you mash, all the face buttons, you can just cut the fanfare in half and it saves a lot of time because it adds up throughout the run. So first things first, I'm going to talk about some basics of this game. First of all, Diddy is better than Donkey, he's smaller and faster. So whenever you can, you want to be Diddy. And Rolling is faster than running, so you want to maximize the amount of time you spent rolling. And if you notice, like I'm pressing rolling Y, and my roll comes to a stop at the end, so you want to jump just before you get stopped. And then you can chain rolls without getting stopped like that. So it's a good idea to practice this motion of rolling, jumping, rolling, jumping. It's the bread and butter of this game. In fact, it's the bread and butter of this trilogy. On the SNES, once you you have that down and you can roll and jump around, it's good to know that rolling through an enemy gives you more speed and more distance. So if possible, try to roll through enemies as much as possible. And also rolling off a cliff is going to give you a little bit of extra length. I don't know how that works, but oh well. More importantly, there's a mechanic called extendo rolling. And the way that works is that if you roll through an enemy, let's say this little beaver here, if I tap Y in front of him, and I let go of Y as I'm going through him, and I repress Y after I pass him, it's going to trigger another roll called an extendo. And this is used quite a few times in this run, and you can get some pretty crazy rolls doing that. It's really fun, makes the game really unique. So, yeah, I would suggest practicing this uh, extendo roll maybe on this beaver. It's pretty easy to do it on this guy. Once again, like the motion is that you gotta trigger a roll in front of him and you gotta let go of Y as you're going through him and you repress Y once you're past him. Okay, so this tutorial is gonna focus on stages with big skips, but I'm gonna go over 1 1 anyway just because it's the first stage and. You know, everyone wants to learn the first stage first, <laughs> makes sense, right? It's not the easiest stage, the second stage is actually much easier, but I'll try and go over the stage in a way that's easy. I won't go over optimization or anything. So anyway, you start rolling immediately, you get to this DK barrel, you want to break it to get Diddy, then you want to sacrifice Donkey immediately. Now, if you're not comfortable, because obviously you get two, you get, you're allowed two hits with two Kongs. If you're not comfortable, you can keep Donkey. It's just a little slower because there's the more lag potential and the overworld movement's a little slower with two Kongs, but it's up to you. 
but the the general strategy is that you want to sacrifice donkey here there's a faster way to do it that's uh, frame perfect i believe where you break the barrel at the same time that you get hit with donkey but if you do it too late you can die so i wouldn't really suggest it for a race i would suggest sticking with something like this destroying the barrel running donkey into the beaver Okay, so from here, there's some pretty cool rolling you can do. You roll through this guy and jump on the next platform. But if you notice this platform has an enemy on it and three bananas. Now you want to do an extendo here. And we've talked about an extendo already. And this one has some nice visual cues. So if you notice the three bananas on the platform, if you trigger your roll at the first banana, so you tap Y at the first banana, you're going to roll through the enemy that's coming towards you, and then you can repress Y on the third banana on the platform. It should get you an extendo. It can be kind of tricky, but I think it's worth going for because it gets you such a long roll. I'll try and show you. Oh, that was kind of bad. <laughs> Tap, repress, and I'm just holding Y, and you can go pretty far just by doing that. Oh. <laughs> Don't get three of these birds. Yeah, you can go pretty far. There's a double extendo you can do here and get even more distance, but I wouldn't suggest learning that. Like the, the single extendo is fast enough for the purpose of this race. If you want to do it, you can, of course, but one extendo is pretty nice. Once you reach here, let go of Y to roll past this barrel. Otherwise you're going to grab the barrel and it's a little slow. If you let go of Y, you go right past, and then you can trigger another roll at the end if you want. And you can roll from the top here, and you roll through these beavers, jump between these guys, and here, you jump once you're past the final banana, just slightly past the final banana, and it's gonna make you roll all the way here, down here. And then you can re-trigger a roll just before this pit, to roll over the gap. And obviously I paused, so like I missed it, but it can be a little risky as you saw, you can fall, but it's not hard to react and jump out of it. If you're not confident, you can just jump. So let's try and do all this again. So jump at the top, roll, don't get Rambi, roll through the beavers, jump between these, jump, uh, roll after the banana, roll over the gap, and for the final roll you want to roll from here. There's like a black marking on the ground. So you roll from here and you beat the stage. Just one minor detail, you can do a fast door, fast door exit. If you let go of forward as you're going to the final exit and you repress forward once you're past it, it can save frames, but it's so minor, it doesn't matter too much. So anyway, that's 1-1 one, one, real fast. Moving on, like I said, I might make another tutorial going really in depth into every stage, but right now I'm just gonna cover skips that I feel like if you're learning this game, you should probably like focus on because they're not too hard to learn and they save a lot of time. So I'm gonna be focusing on, on these. And if I make another tutorial that goes more in depth, then I'm gonna link it. And anyway, 1-1, one, one, jungle hijinks, no big skips, ropey rampage, I guess it's, it's not really a skip, but I can show it real fast. I'm not gonna talk about or explain the movement or any of this. I'm also very rusty, I haven't played this game in half a year. But, I guess I'll real quick talk about it. Here, if you go down here, right under the O letter here. There's a barrel, sends you in a bonus, and then you can just die. And it shoots you out pretty fast, and this is faster than playing the level as intended. So I guess taking this bonus could be considered a nice little skip. It's very easy. All right. Reptile Rumble, pretty difficult stage, but there's no big skips in it, so I'm, gonna, I'm not going to talk about it. Same thing with Coral Capers, most water levels, there's no big skips. 
Bell Cannon Canyon is interesting, however, because you can skip the whole level with a bunch of uh, developer barrels. Okay, the first thing you want to do in this stage, you jump up here. Then, ooh, what is this? It's a barrel. I, th I think I should point out here, you want to hold right here, otherwise you won't make it to the next barrel, so you want to kind of jump into this barrel, hold right, and it's just going to send you flying, skipping most of the stage, until you reach this barrel here. Now I want to point out that if you enter the stage with only one Kong, it's pretty nice, because once you grab this DK barrel, especially if you're not experienced with the game, you don't really know when you're gonna reach this section and like if you have two Kongs the game won't freeze and you're just kind of gonna go right through and it can be hard to if you're not experienced with the game can be hard to react and get the roll here of the tree to these next trees so if you have one Kong is ideal because it freezes you have plenty of time to react to this roll just be aware if you have two Kongs you won't have a pause buffer here for this once you're here, actually I should mention this, if you fall, you have to wait for these kaboings or kremlings or critters, I don't know what they're called, I don't remember, but you have to wait for them to kind of cycle and you jump on them. Pretty easy, you get it back there, so it just, it's not the end of the world if you fall like this, oh no, what do I do? You just bounce, you get three tries. But anyway, moving on. Take some more barrels. And this one's interesting because if you don't hold B, you, you're gonna make it about here. But if you hold B while you bounce on this guy, you're gonna make it much further. And that goes for most of these barrels. There's a Vulture Culture, which is the first stage in World 3, has a few of these barrels where you want to do the same thing. Saves a little bit of time. But the important skip is this one, right here, making it up here to this final stretch of automatic barrels. I'm going to try and explain it as best as I can, but here goes. Once you're, you're shot here past the halfway barrel, if you want, obviously, you can go back, get it. Who knows? It's a race. Anything could happen. Okay, we're back. Had a little bit of issues, that's what happens when you have a SD2 SNES into a game saver. Don't try this at home, folks. I'm a trained professional. Also, I'm using a ROM hack that probably has save states in it, but I'm too lazy to update my firmware. <laughs> but that's besides the point. Let's go back to the what I was talking about. The easy way to do this. Roll through these guys. And you don't have to do any extendos here. You can just hold like Y and roll through jump, land on the green platform, the platform of the green critter from here, roll again, jump here, jump here, make it up here. And you want to hold B after you bounce on him to gain more height, to make sure you make it on top of the tree. Because this is pretty crucial, because if you miss it, like if he makes it up there before you do, or if you get hit, or if you kill him by accident and you're not up there. There's no backup, really, outside of just playing the stage. So that's a, that's a pretty crucial thing to learn. It's much comfier to take these barrels up here than beat the stage as intended. There's no question about that. That's how the stage would look like at the end. Here's a little more advanced. I'm not going to go over the optimal way to do it. I don't even know if I remember how to do it. It's pretty tight, but I think uh, Enryu found uh, the optimal way for this. I believe. Don't go with me on that. But the semi-optimal way to do it involves a extend, though. I need to re-enter the stage, otherwise it's going to crash again. When you hear the overworld music <laughs> in the stage, you know it's going to crash any moment. Okay. Here's the extendo method. So you would roll through the first two, and then at the TNT barrel here, 
you would let go of Y, roll through the next enemy, and then repress Y around right here. Once you're like horizontally aligned with the green enemy, that's when you would repress Y. Because the way extendos work, uh, it's gonna make me roll forward into him. Because it looks like I'm about to plummet to the floor right now. But with the magic of extendo, once I unpause, I'm gonna repress Y. And I'm gonna roll magically to the green dude. If I can do it fast enough, because it's kind of tough when you're pausing. Let's see if it works. Oh, it was too slow. <laughs> too slow. But anyway, let go of Y around here. And then repress around here. It's going to make you roll through the green enemy. And it's going to send you flying into that section. And you can't really worry about being too slow if you do this, because you come in with such speed. I wish I had input display, but... Holding Y, letting go at the top of the TNT barrel. Not holding Y, not holding Y, repressing when I want to be aligned horizontally with the green enemy. Oh, I did it with the pause. And then make it up here. I just want to point out also that you kind of want to stop your momentum. Because otherwise you, you might accidentally make it into here. And from that point, it's kind of bad. There's probably a way to back up out of it, but it's probably pretty unreliable. So turn around to make sure you don't have too much momentum. And you can jump on the kaboing. And that's pretty much it for the skip, the skips in this stage. Saves a lot of time to take all these barrels, that's for sure. Alright, so moving on from Barrel Cannon Canyon is the boss fight. So I'm gonna skip the boss fight, of course there's no skips in it. Entering World 2, Winky's Walkway, the first level, has no skips in it. Also, it's a pretty fun platforming stage. There's a cool extendo at the beginning, but I'm not gonna cover it. Since I want to focus on the, the things that are less uh, intuitive and also just uh, developer warps. So maybe in another more in-depth tutorial. So this stage, first of all, you'd be entering with Diddy. This stage, all you need to know is that the developer intended warp is right here. It's hugging the wall off screen and it sends you at the very end of the stage. All you have to do at that point is jump over this one enemy and that's it. You have to be careful to not accidentally hit this automatic barrel, however, because it's gonna send you into the level and from there you want to die, but the first bit is a little far into the stage, you waste like 10 or so seconds doing it. Not ideal. So you can come in walking to walk past the barrel and then jump over. If You can also hold Y, I guess, just grab the barrel, bring it with you. As long as you're safe and make sure that you don't touch the barrel. The optimal way you would roll, like tap Y, and to make sure you don't grab the barrel, jump. And it's a little risky because you can get the barrel more if you do that, but that's the optimal way. It's also a little faster here to do like some small jumps on a minecart if you want. You get save frames, it's not a big deal. That's it for this stage. It's just a developer warp. Alright, Bouncy Bonanza, there's not much here. I mean, there's a lot here, actually. It's a very complex, difficult stage, but there's no actual skips. So I'm gonna go over this stage, but just be aware that this stage might require a lot of practice if you want to get good at it. It's also scary, so I would suggest safe strats in this stage. But anyway, let's move on, stop and go station. There's a real skip here. Developer, warp. Anyone can do this. First thing you do entering the stage, you hold left. And you're warped at the end, that's it. <laughs> You've done it. You've skipped the whole stage. The ending movement can be a little tricky. But... It's no big deal. You know, you try and get all these stops, stop signs, and you should be safe. 
the first one you can kind of just roll and even though it looks like you don't touch it it actually works let me re-enter the stage before it crashes but yeah the movement should look something like this jump roll bounce and the last enemy here you can just kind of roll through him if your movement was fast enough otherwise it's going to be in a different location and you might get hit but if you do the movement right you can just roll through him Okay, so next stage after Stop and Go Station, Millstone Mayhem. And there's a super jump glitch in this one, so it gets a little interesting. And there's another developer intended warp. Basically, you use the super jump to access the developer intended warp a little faster than intended. Doesn't require a tire. And it's pretty nice, pretty easy, pretty consistent. So first thing you would do entering the stage is you bounce on the tire. And you can bounce like instantly by running into it, pressing B. You don't have to jump on it. And that goes for every tire in this game. It can help for the Nikki boss fights actually. To just run on the tire, press B, get a nice jump. Obviously you, uh, you hold B if you want more height. Reach up here, get rid of these TNT barrels, swap to Donkey, jump over the, the Crusher. And this is where you set up the super jump. So how you set up a super jump in this game, you get hit on a slope. So you see the crusher is on a slope, I'm right there. If I walked into him, I'm going to get hit on a slope and set up a super jump. It's not too hard, but you just have to be careful not to be too early. Because if you do it too early, you get hit. He's not yet on the slope. You don't get a super jump. If you do it too late, Normally you would have uh, killed him, I think it didn't work because I had a pause or something. But if you do it too late, you're gonna kill him. Like that. So you wanna make sure that you get hit nice and even in the center of the slope. And you can confirm that you've gotten the super jump. Because when you get the super jump, Donkey goes flying into the sky like that. As opposed to if I get hit normally, Donkey is just gonna go running into the stage. That means there's no super jump setup. So once again, jump up here, get rid of the TNT, swap, wait, jump over, get hit on the slope, confirm that Donkey is flying to the sky, you have your super jump now. So from that point, you would just jump past these two crushers, grab the DK barrel, and once you've grabbed the DK barrel, you turn around and you jump into this crusher with your, with your barrel. And from the moment that you jump into him, you should hold B and never let go. Because in a super jump, once you take damage, you want to hold B and you never want to let go of B until you've gained the desired height that you want with the super jump. And that applies for every super jump. I'm going to bring this concept back on other stages with other super jumps. So here, I hold B from now and I'm still holding B, still holding B, still, I just, you hold B until you've gotten the height that you want. So jump over this crusher and like keep running and keep holding B into the next crusher. It's gonna make you take damage and automatically donkey if you're holding left, Y and B. It's gonna bounce on the other crusher and you're gonna be right under the developer intended warp. Now, since this warp is off-screen, it can be tricky, but there's a nice visual cue here. There's a black vase here. The warp is directly above this. So if you bounce on the crusher directly under at the vase, you're under the warp, you're safe, you're fine. Notice, black vase, right into the warp. Easy. Now, there's another way to do it, I guess. You can kind of uh, take damage on the first crusher. It's a little faster, I guess, but you start holding B after you take damage, bounce on the first crusher, and you kind of align the camera centered on the black vase. And at that point, Donkey is above the developer warp, so you would let go of B and fall into the warp. Obviously, the way I'm doing it right now is a little slow, but if you do it optimal, it's faster. Something like that. Now it's still a little slow, but... <laughs> A little rusty at this game, I haven't played in six months. But I would suggest doing the one where you jump over the first one and go below. And the ending on the stage 
pretty easy. All you have to do, I'll, I'll show it in a second. All you have to do is that you roll in front of this tire here and it's gonna make you clip through the beaver wheel. And that's it. So instantly press B into the tire to get the insta bounce. Get rid of the TNT, swap, wait a little bit, jump over him, get hit on the slope, confirm that you're the super jump, jump over these, jump over him, hold B the whole time, hold B, hold B, hold B, under the vase, and then into the warp. And that's it. I guess I could have done the ending also. So I'll do it again. The ending, roll before the tire, like that. There you go, you've beaten the stage. Now I'll show the intended way to get to the developer warp. It's pretty slow, it's pretty inconsistent in my opinion. I don't like it, but I'll show it. If you really don't get the super jumps, go all the way here. There's like a barrel here that shoots you, it's not a pit. And you go here to get the tire. Now, you gotta do what's called tire over gap. And it's not hard, but it's kind of inconsistent. So you kinda wanna push the tire to the edge and then roll once you're at the edge. And you bring the tire with you. And this is harder than a super jump, in my opinion. Like, you can fail it like this. Sometimes you make it past the gap, but it's like on the first possible pixel, so you can't push it any further. Sometimes you push it off camera, it despawns. I don't like it. I'd recommend a super jump. I think it's not too hard. But anyway, that's how it would look like. <laughs> Let's see if I can actually do it. That, no, it's, it's too hard. Tie over gap. 2011 strats. Alright, we did it. And then you have to bring it pretty far also. And not only that, but you have to swap the donkey because I think Diddy's hitbox is too small to reach the barrel. So donkey. There we go. Roll in front of the tire. And that's Millstone Mayhem. Moving on to World 3. There's uh, two developer intended warps in the first two stages. <laughs> first one is kind of interesting because two things. First of all, you need to be donkey, it's a donkey only barrel. And second of all, you want to be fast enough because if you're too slow to reach the warp, it just disappears. So your movement's pretty important here. First things first. Jump over the barrel. I'm gonna explain the movement here because it's pretty crucial in part of the warp. You can also roll and then jump, like tap Y and so that you don't grab the barrel and then jumps a little bit faster. You know, it's just a tiny little optimization. Doesn't really matter, you can just jump. jump uh, roll through the mini necky here and shoot through the big necky here. And just like in the uh, barrel cannon canyon here, when you're being shot out of these into the neckies, you wanna hold B. You're gonna get more distance. So if I don't hold B, oh, I barely, <laughs> I barely cleared the DK barrel. But let's see if I hold B. Just how, how much further I make it. Oh my God, that's so much faster. That goes for both barrels here. So roll, hold B oh, during all this. Roll again, hold B, and then final roll under the necky here. We saw the warp, it was there, but then I went back, so now it's gone. But it would be right here. Let's do it again. Roll, hold B. Roll, hold B. Roll. And there it is, there's the warp. Once you've spawned it, you can be slow as you want, it's not gonna go away. And notice that if I swap to DDH, it just vanishes. It's like magic. And... <laughs> Interesting thing is if you're not comfortable with doing the movement with Donkey, you can do it with Diddy. Like maybe you're entering the stage with Diddy for some reason. You can still do it and then once you're here, you swap. 
and a barrel appears. Magic. Okay, so the ending of Vulture Culture is pretty important. It's not too hard, but you might get hit, and if you get hit, it's gonna affect the next stage, which has a, also a developer intended warp. But this one you need Diddy to access, so if here you get hit, if Diddy gets hit by one of these bees, I'm gonna try and show you how to back up out of it. It looks easy, but these last bees can be kind of tricky. So for the ending, first of all, to skip over this mini Neki, you want to hold right and not Y. It's weird because most of this game you're going to want to hold Y, but this is one instance where if you hold Y, you're going to bounce for some reason on the Neki like that. And you don't want that to happen, so just hold right. And once you land, you swap Kongs, you want Diddy. And you can swap, I don't know if I mentioned, you can swap by Select or A. I prefer A personally. But yeah, you swap here. Don't swap too close to the edge, because it can be spooky after that. You can just kind of walk to your death here, that's happened to me plenty. And after you swap, roll into the barrel and then you just navigate past the bees. And like I said, this can happen, you can get hit. And for the next stage, you need Diddy. So, in this situation, you could either go back in Vulture Culture. There's a Kong here. And then you would swap and start select. Start select exits a stage. Actually, I think in this game, start select select. Right, I think. Let's see. Start, select. No, it's just start, select. So you start, select out of the stage. Because you've beaten it, you can just leave. I think everyone knows that. So for also for the section at the end of Vulture Culture, I guess if you want, if if you think you're gonna get hit, if maybe you get hit there every time. Maybe it's worth it to not switch just to the section with Donkey. Take the hit at the end there because his hitbox is too large. And then you know that you're going to have Diddy in front for the next stage. So I guess that could be a viable option. Be like that. Yeah, that could be viable if, you're not, if you, you know you're going to get hit. That way you would enter Treetop Town with Diddy. It allows you to access the warp that's up here. <laughs> Happens pretty quickly, but real fast to explain it. You want to roll into the beaver and then jump on the Neki. Now the Neki happens, he comes at you pretty fast, so you kind of want to jump early. You anticipate the jump. You don't want to jump when you see the Neki, because at that point, it's usually too late. It'll be a hit. So it's a very early jump onto the Neki, and then the tire is up here off camera, you can see it as I'm bouncing on it. It can be tricky at first to try and figure out where it is. You'll get used to it. It's not too difficult, but obviously it's frustrating when you don't make it, because there's no more beaver, no more Neki. There's no real backup, so you kind of have to reset the stage at that point. So once again, roll early jump onto the tire, and then once you're on the tire, press B to get a big bounce, and you're gonna make it to the developer warp. Now the ending is pretty easy. All you have to do is bounce up here, and then roll down, and that's it. You're done with the stage. There's multiple ways to do that ending, I don't know if uh, the community is ever going to agree on which one's the fastest ones, but the safest one is to go above, like I showed. Pretty easy. There's like a tire roll <laughs> down there. Looks fancy. Apparently it's slower, so whatever. And just one final thing to mention, I guess if you got hit in Vulture Culture at the end and you you only have Donkey here. 
Uh, I told you to go get the DK Barrel in Vulture Culture, but there's also the DK Barrel here in Treetop Town. It's just that if you want to do it, you, you can't kill the beaver, and you have to kind of get the DK Barrel and then come back. And then don't kill the beaver, and just kind of let things die and let it respawn, and then do it. That's another way to back up out of it, but personally I think going back to vulture culture is simpler. I don't know which one's faster, but they're probably roughly the same. Ideally, you'd enter the stage with Diddy and just do it easy. Only takes seven seconds. That's it. Okay, three, three, forest frenzy. Now that's a big one. There's multiple skips. Well, there's only one skip, but there's multiple ways to do it. I'm gonna go over two of them. I'm gonna briefly talk about two other ones. I think the most viable way for this race would be the old super jump method. So we've already talked about super jumps, how to set it up, you get hit on a slope. So it's the same principle here. So you enter the stage, jump on this rope. Just uh, as a side note here, you can jump off this, these ropes, but it's like tight. Like most of the time, you're just kind of going to attempt it and it's going to be like, oh, I guess I missed it, but it's worth attempting. I don't know exactly when you want to do it. It's like one frame, I think, after you've grabbed a rope or something like that. It's not instantly. It's just like slightly after. Or is it? Maybe it's instantly. I swear if I sometimes do it instantly, it doesn't work. Maybe instantly works. It's kind of tricky to tell sometimes. See, that felt instant and yet it didn't work. But it's a minor time saver here. You can skip this rope. Once you're past the rope, yeah, okay, I had a feeling I was gonna die. <laughs> Say stating, it's hard. Miss the rope skip. You're gonna roll up here, like the platform with the DK barrel. And it's gonna make you roll through the kaboing. You're gonna clear this whole gap. Just roll through, you can make it here. Once you're here, stop swapping. I'm just, I just wanna make a safe stick. Once you're here, you have to wait on this rope. And then the next one, you can also do another rope skip if you want. And this is where it things start to matter a lot. So jump on this rope and get the DK barrel, hug the wall. You want to land on the mound so that the DK barrel pops up. Immediately after that, hold right, hug the wall, and you're going to jump. So let's try and do it. Hold right, jump, and it's gonna sacrifice Diddy. And you're essentially taking, getting hit on a slope here. Doesn't look like it, but if you're hugging the wall and jumping, it counts as uh, getting hit on a slope and you store super jump. It's like you can see here, well, you didn't see it because I immediately grabbed another Kong. I'll try not to grab the Kong, but. You can see Diddy went flying to the sky, confirming that I have a super jump set up right now. It's not hard. It's probably easier actually to set up the super jump than the other one. Hug the wall, jump, that's it. And you also want to get Diddy back, so you want to also get this DK barrel. And to do that, like, it, does, it doesn't really matter how you do it as long as you do it, like, there's optimal, way, optimal ways to do it, like, oh, like that, maybe that was fast. I think there's like a frame perfect way to do it where you get no freeze even, but, like, you, you can do it however you want. If you just want to do this and then get Diddy, that's fine, you still have your super jump. But anyway, I'll try and do it how it would look. Hug the wall, jump, there we go. Make a save state. Okay, so once you have your super jump set up, and you make it over here, this rope, this is where the super jump happens. When you start seeing these two kaboings, they're jumping around. 
So I'm going to make a safe state here. And you want to jump off the rope as soon as you can. You can't do it too early because, like, you're going to die probably. And also, you, if you do it way early, like, you're just going to re-grab the rope. So you're going to have to, like... <laughs> learn the feel on when to jump off the rope you immediately run into the the kaboing so if you remember from the last time in millstone mayhem i told you in super jumps when you get hit you want to start holding b up until and you keep holding b up until you've gotten the height that you desire with your super jump so in this case that means we're going to be holding b for quite a, a lot of time so here I'm start holding B. I'm still holding Y also because that's just what you do in Donkey. You hold Y. <laughs> so I'm holding B and Y. And I'm letting Diddy fall a little bit. I'm not holding forward anymore after getting hit, and that's because I want to bounce on the on the other Kaboing. But if I go immediately, then I jump over him. So you kind of want to delay going forward a little bit so that you actually bounce on him like that. And still holding B and Y this whole time. I'm still holding B and Y right now. I'm holding forward B and Y. And what's going on right now is that I'm super jumping to the right and I'm gaining height. As long as I'm holding B, I'm gaining height. And I'm going to want to time the release of B so that Diddy starts falling. And you want Diddy to fall before the end of the stage, obviously, because if you hold B for too long, you're going to be stuck in the air, you're going to lose time. I've seen people lose like 30 seconds because they, they forgot to let go of B. So you're going to want a visual cue on when to let go of B during the super jump. So to reiter reiterate, you get hit here. Wait until Diddy is almost, almost on the floor. Not entire, not completely on the floor, because if you wait too long, what can happen also is that you're just gonna walk through the kaboing like that. So I think just before Diddy hits the ground is a good visual cue. There's another possible way to miss it, where if you, I don't really remember how to do it, but it's possible that Diddy is gonna grab the rope after the super jump. Like this rope. Sometimes Diddy is gonna grab this rope. I think that means that you bounce too far to the right on the kaboing or something like this. But I don't know. If you do what I'm telling you, it should pretty much never happen. You get hit here, wait until you're almost on the floor and then hold forward. And you shouldn't grab the rope at that point. And also not too late, otherwise you walk through the kaboing like that. So I'm going to explain the visual cue here. So the visual cue is that once you've done the super jump, there's all these bees, and then there's the halfway barrel. That's kind of a nice indicator that the visual cue is soon. There's a, D there's a halfway barrel and then there's a DK barrel. And it's right after that, this section here with the kaboing and the rope. The visual cue is going to be here, and it's going to be like this. When the kaboing touches the left edge of your screen, that's when you're going to let go of B, so that Diddy can start falling. So it's going to look something... Well, I say it's going to look something like this, but... You can't see it, it's happening off, off camera, but... Here, I let go of B. So now I'm falling, falling, falling. And if you, I did it right... I'm going to land at the top of the mound at the end of the stage and I'm going to be able to roll to the exit. If you hold a little too long, it's not a big deal. It's just that you won't get the roll. A little early can be dangerous because you can fall in this pit here. But like I should land at the top here. Here we go. You And then you roll through this kaboing and that's it. Out of the stage. Easy every time. So I'm going to do the full thing. Show what it looks like. Oh, got the rope skip. It's nice. Got the rope skip. This one also. Okay. Got the DK barrel. Get hit. Wait, wait, wait. Go forward. 
Hold B the whole time. Start holding B when you get hit. And you let go of B at the visual cue we talked about. Which is right here. And then the rest of the stage... I mean, you guys have already seen it. You land at the end and you roll out. Pretty easy. Now, there are other ways to get through the stages. There's a frame-perfect way with the super jump roll is the fastest way. And I wouldn't recommend it. You have to press Y on a frame, and because it's a super jump roll, not just a regular jump roll, you have to hold B while you press Y on the perfect frame. And it can be tricky. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. It can save a lot of time, though. I think it's 15 to 20 seconds, but... If you guys want to learn it, it's just going on dkcspeedruns.com. There's more in-depth advanced tutorials there. And... There is another way called a super free roll, which is also faster, and it's not frame perfect, but the setup for it is kind of tricky. It includes like a pause buffer that needs to be frame perfect. I guess there is a frame perfect component also in that one, but if you pause too late, you can kind of adjust to it and stuff. And it's dangerous because you need to it's possible to fall in a pit doing it. I wouldn't recommend it either. Even though it's called a super free roll, the setup is not actually free. So once again, I'm not going to talk about it here. And then there's the old, I guess, 2010 method of doing the stage, which I'm not going to go over either. But if you're interested, it should be done in the warpless or just no major glitches category, rather. And it involves just doing the stage as intended, but you kind of uh, clip above the rope so that you're safe from enemies the whole stage and you don't have to really think about anything. But I don't know, I've never learned that. I think the super jump, I think it's pretty consistent personally. And yeah, that's the method that I would recommend learning. All right. Now that we're past Forest Frenzy, finally. Temple Tempest, there's no skips in here. It's a very fun platforming stage, but it's not what this tutorial's about, sadly. <laughs> I'd rather explain Temple Tempest than Map Warp. <laughs> anyway, Map Warp. You can skip most of Orangutan Gang by doing a very controversial trick. So here's how it's gonna work. Once you beat Temple Tempest, you're gonna mash your buttons as usual to skip the fanfare. And then you're gonna be automatically sent to Candy's save point. But here, you're not gonna want to go on Horangutan Gang. You're actually gonna wanna go back and go into Funky's Flight. <laughs> I know it seems pretty weird, but bear with me here. First of all, here's how it would look like. You would, you would beat the stage, you're sent to Ken's save point, you go back. Let's go into Funky's Flight. Get a ride. Go all the way back to World 1. I know you worked so hard to reach World 3, but you gotta go back to World 1. Now, here's how Map Warp works. And this... I believe it's only in World 1 that there's corners like this, but you can see that when the plane is turning, it stops on the little pivot here. It stops for one frame. And if you press any of the face button on this one frame, you're gonna map warp. It can be X, A, Y, B. I believe select work also. Maybe it's start. One, one of the select or start works also. But you press one of these buttons on that frame and you're gonna map warp. There's other corners here, and the one you want is the this corner. Like the one near the cave sign. This one, not this one. Not this one, this one. <laughs> I wish I had like a mouse to point at it, but so the way you would do it is like Funky's flight takes you here, you immediately go down, go here, go here, and then you mash on that corner to try and get the map warp and I'm not getting it right now because I'm not really mashing very well okay there it is and now you're at the end of orangutan gang 
and it's not like it's a frame perfect trick but here's the thing you can mash five buttons to try and hit the frame and some people use spoons some people use phone chargers cell phones the back of a Wii remote some people call it tool assisted I don't know some people some people use like multiple fingers and flick the face buttons to try and time it as they pivot there's so many ways to do it the, the logic is that you want to mash on this corner to try and get it and I'm a phone charger person myself I don't know where it is right now let me try and get my hand on it you gotta be careful however because if you notice there's two pivots here and the first one's also a map warp so if you start mashing too early and you map warp here, you're sent at the end of Ropey Rampage, and no one wants to go there. You've already beaten the stage, so you gotta kinda wait once you're past the first pivot, and then you can start mashing, or you can start timing it if you want. But you gotta be careful about that first pivot for sure. I've lost runs to that. And then this pivot, I don't even remember what it sends you. Let's see. I I, it, yeah, this this is orangutan gang also, but it's like a different section. It's not as far. This is used in any percent, actually. The seven minutes category, you would use this map warp, I believe. I'm not an any percent guy myself, but anyway, from the top, there's really nothing to this. It's all about mashing. So okay, you beat Temple Tempest. And I should point out that you don't need to be in a funky plane to do the map warp. Like you can be a, a solo Kong and it's also gonna work just as long as you don't have two Kongs. Because if you have two Kongs, they're not gonna be on the pivot at the same time. It won't work. So anyway, you beat Temple Tempest, you're sent to Candy Safe Point, you go back to Funkies. I believe you gotta mash B here, because it's the only button that makes you send it. <laughs> yeah, B is the only button that makes you jump in the plane. Go back to here, down here, wait till you're past the first pivot, mash, first try map warp, and it sends you here at the end. Hold forward, and then you roll over all this stuff, jump over, roll through this guy, and roll to the end. Okay, so now we're in world 4. We beat Orangutan Gang with the map warp. After that is a water level. Clam City, I'm not gonna go over that. And then there's a boss fight, I'm also not gonna go over that. And now we're at Snow Barrel Blast, 4-1. Most of this stage is pure platforming, there's no real skip per se. Except at the ending, where... The ending is notoriously difficult casually, so it's pretty nice to know that you can skip it. And I feel like most people know how to skip it already because as a kid they've played it, everyone knew it, and just in case I'm still gonna show it. Obviously I'm playing through the stage right now, I'm not explaining anything, but that's because trying to stay focused. This tutorial is already much longer than I thought it would be and I'm <laughs> skipping a lot of uh, stages. So yeah, I'm just gonna focus on the skip at the end here. It's a little past the halfway. There's an extendo here. Alright, here we are. So you kind of want to shoot diagonally from that barrel. You make it all the way up here. And then the edge here, you want to roll at this tree that I'm standing in front. You're going to roll here into the bird. And from there... You jump into this barrel. And then under this barrel... Is where the skip is. You skip the whole ending. And it's pretty nice because that's a lot of barrel and this is... 
I haven't done this section in a long time, but man, I remember. Look at this, this barrels, this bee. No one wants to deal with this stuff. Just skip it. So once again, roll at the tree. And this is the safe way to do it. Jumping this bell, shooting down. And like, this can happen. I personally don't like doing, using these barrels because... I don't know, I have bad reaction times, <laughs> I find that they spin too quick. So if you want to go, you can jump directly into the, the the barrel at the bottom if you want by doing it like this. I guess it's riskier, quote unquote. I don't think it is. It's like once you're off camera at the bottom, you kind of do a neutral jump. You stop holding forward, just jump straight up. Make sure that you're not going to land in the barrel above. And then hold forward to land into it. It's directly under the other barrel, so you can't really go wrong. And the optimal way to do this would be to delay your jump as late as possible. So that you jump directly in the barrel. It's a little scary because you're so close to the death plane if you do that. But it's faster, there it is. I don't know if I would recommend this for a race. Probably not. <laughs> just just do the neutral jump and go directly into it. It's going to be fine. The ending, there's nothing to it. You just kind of jump over this guy and then jump up here. That's it. Okay, so now slip slide ride has another developer in the warp there's a lot of them in this game wow so the stage begins and you want to lure one of these kaboing or critter i know i've been calling kaboings but i think they're called critters and you go up here and once you're up here be careful not to grab this barrel because like i, I once you play this game, when you play this game, you're holding Y all the time, almost, because it's just faster and stuff. But like, kind of let go of Y here to not grab the barrel, because if you do, you're going to slip on the ice and end up in that bonus. No one wants to do that. Now we get the bonus music. So anyway, you kind of bait him. You can do it kind of early if you want to be optimal, but yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> let go of Y. I think Optimo is like 5 bounds, 2, 3, 4, 5, something like that. Get here, swap to Donkey, and if you notice, there's a barrel right above me. It's kind of tricky to see it because it's kind of blue, but you can't reach it with Diddy. It's, the hitbox is too small, so you need Donkey. And it sends you to the end of the stage, and then you swap back to Diddy because Diddy is faster. So that's really easy. And it saves a lot of time. It's kind of sad because this is the only stage where you hear this music and there's not a lot of categories <laughs> where you play this stage. I believe no major skips and warpless you would play it. Oh yeah, the music's questionable right now. <laughs> so yeah, pretty easy skip to switch to donkey jump in the barrel. There's a faster way to do it with Diddy. I'll try and explain it. So you do the same thing. Oh, that can happen. <laughs> Despawn the guy. And you want to jump above the rope. And it's tricky because it's a rope that sends you up all the time. So if you like hold a direction, let's say I'm holding right, and you jump to the right, and then you come back. You can't see it because it's off screen, but you come back above and re grab it. You can go above the rope. It's a little similar to how it works in Forest Frenzy to skip all the enemies, although I'm not very good at... Actually, I can't do it at all, the Forest Frenzy one, I've never learned it. But I think the mechanics are kind of similar. The inputs are pretty tricky, because when you're re-grabbing it off-screen, you want to hold down. Why? I don't know, but the movement, like, I'll try and do it on-screen. Like, you jump to the side and then re-grab it above the camera. That's the movement. 
what I'm doing off screen. It's like jumping to the right, re-grabbing it off camera. And then when you re-grab it, you hold down. And oh, I guess that's why you hold down, so that you don't... You get minimal, like, slipping on the rope. So you're up here, jump, hold down, and now you're above the rope. And when you're above the rope, you can jump to the side here. And for some reason, there's a platform. And you can just make it up there. And the inputs are a bit tricky, like I said. You go to the side, re-grab while holding... Uh, re-grab, hold down. <laughs> so I'm holding down right now. And when you see that you're off camera, you're gonna jump to the left. I'm very rusty, I haven't played in six months. <laughs> jump to the left. And when you feel that you would land on the platform, obviously you don't see it, so it's pure feel. But if like, I'm trying to describe it like the platform would be pretty much at the top of the screen, like just above the top of the screen. So once you feel that you're landing, you start mashing Y and holding left. It's going to send you into the barrel, because if you don't do that, you're gonna fall for some reason it's uh, why i don't know it's such a weird like something like that's gonna happen if you don't mash why i'm sure there's plenty of people that can explain this better than me but it's like jump to the it's like when when you're like above the rope i say i'm holding down but i'm also holding left so i'm holding down left when I'm above the camera just so that I'm ready for the, the jump to the left but for the sake of the trick like if you just want to go above the rope you just need to hold down so I'm above camera I'm jumping to the left and when I feel like I'm I've uh, landed I start mashing Y and I'm not mashing super fast I'm just like pressing Y if you can hear it it's not like a fast mash or anything and obviously you're holding left the whole time, so that's the optimal way to do it. I don't know if I would recommend it, like, it, I guess it saves time, it's not that hard, it's just the inputs are a little weird, the slippy rope makes it a little weird. It's like, it, it can be pretty fast like this. So I'm trying to explain the inputs to the, my best, I'll go over them again. Once you're almost at the top, yeah, try to do it. I guess I should mention, it's a little harder to do it from the full top, in my opinion. I don't know why, but I tend to jump just before I'm at the top. And then it's like jumping to the right, going back to the left, re-grabbing above the camera while holding down. And then immediately jump to the left once you feel like you've landed. Press Y a bunch of times while still holding left, and it should work. Alright, I think that's as much I'm gonna say about this. I'll show the ending of the stage real fast. Wait for this B, because you can't, you can't make it, otherwise you have to wait a little bit for this B. You go up here. Jump a bunch of times. And doing this optimal is really hard. But you can kind of like do jumps like this to save time but you know like if you're not comfortable you can just do this which is the intended way like i've seen world record runs lose so much time on this rope because they're trying to get the five jump optimal and they, they fail it they lose three seconds like I, I don't know if i would suggest it maybe if you're comfortable but anyway that's the end of the stage another one down